Welcome to Drums at Andersons, and today we've got Ollie Wiseman. How's it going? <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah? All good? <laughs> so, come to play some drums for us. Yes. Yeah, the, thanks the, for having me. These lovely, these wonderful kids. Yeah. Gary or Terence, whatever we're going to nickname it. Yeah, there's not a name yet. If anyone's got any ideas for names, then please uh, put them in the comments below. Or Mrs. Wiseman, this is your Christmas tree. <laughs> um, so, we want to talk about pop today, and you do quite a lot of that, don't you? Yeah, for the last few years, that's what, yeah, I've been very much involved in, in doing One whole that. tour for three yeah, years. Yeah, basically. it's been really, really busy, yeah. Yeah, I've been really lucky to be involved in it all, and yeah, it's been, been great. So, what is your gig? What is your, what's, what's so your office? So, for the last sort of three, three and a half years, I've been playing with a girl called Anne-Marie, um, and that's kind of, you know, we've, from, from the word go, I've, I've been playing drums for her, and, and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's grown from... You know, starting off at stuff like the Deaf Institute in Manchester, um, all the way up to sort of the most recent tour where it was Three Arena Dublin and things like that. So it's been really <laughs> nice to be on this to be on this journey and to see everything sort of develop to how it's developed now, so to speak. You're so. one of very few people who can say did an arena tour as a warm up because you went and supported Ed Sheeran. Yes. Yeah. No. Well. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It was mad. You that's know. that's a and that's he, a tour still. Yeah. He, yeah, exactly. He, you know, he did that, and then and then straight on to well, Ed, Ed Sheeran is just absolutely nailed it, hasn't he? So he's yeah, it's amazing. As you said, completed that. Has yeah, has done that. Yeah. So with Amory, you're playing sort of with a lot of pop artists now as well. You're playing electric and acoustic, aren't you? So. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And I think that in terms of the world that I've been in for the last few years, it's become more and more apparent that people want want that sort of sound in in you know those those pop shows people want the sounds from the record but they want a live drummer to play them um and we just found that that approach with this gig was was the best approach to take um and it meant that the drummer could could have as much control as possible as playing playing all those parts live you know so it still has all the feel of a of a live band but they're, they're playing the sounds from the record so it sounds like the record you know so but that has been a big thing for your actual acoustic years. rig is yep. tailored as well, isn't it? So yes, exactly. Not just the size of the drums, the heads you use. The whole thing has been tailored. Yes, no, definitely. The whole the whole kit has been designed around everything working together. So the way that I've approached electronics in on on the gig that I've been on is is that rather than sort of to trigger acoustic drums and then get the blend of electronics and acoustics together that way, I'm using all the electronic sounds are played on electronic pads and they're, very, they're, they're a sort of, you know, electronic sounds. And then the acoustic sound obviously is very natural. Um, and, you know, working with the guys from the town and stuff, it's, it's been amazing to, to, to work on getting a kit that blends really well with those sounds and, and lends itself to those, those types of music. So, yeah. It's, it was a journey. You obviously, you'd done other yes. brands before and you'd had maple birch kits. You know what I mean, yes, these are all short stack. Yes. Quick reacting toms. Yeah, so this kit's the original series. It's a walnut kit, um, seven ply walnut shells. And what we, what, what, when I came to Natal, I said to them that, you know, I want a, just a really focused tone from the drums. I don't really want any overtones. I don't want the drums to really ring out for ages. Just really want focused controlled sound that is lends itself to blending of electronic sounds really well because you know electronic sounds like one shot samples they're really focused and you know, I just want I wanted that, that to trans translate in in acoustic kit as well um, and the, the walnut series you've got kind of with the you know I've played maple shell drums before um, but in these sizes I, I wanted that sort I still wanted them to sound quite deep and to have that sort of deep deep attack you know that sort of rock rock element to them and to me it was the best of both worlds because you've got the bottom end with walnut as well as the sort of nice warm tone that you get from maple so this this kit straight away I just fell in love with it straight away and it's it's very it's very, it's, it's very easy to make those things work together so, and this was thunderous do you know what I mean it's yeah yeah it's got loads sounding. of low end <clears throat> you know the drums they can sound like really massive rocks rock drums um even though they're they're sort of short stack they're all six and a half inches deep so um, with the, with the, like I say, going back to the walnut, it's you know you you get that depth of sound even with these short stack toms, and yeah, it's been great. It's been exactly what. I'm also just going to grab this one down. Talk okay. about the heads. Yeah. So your coated top and bottom, that's not that unusual. But yeah. your coated pinstripe, 
and coated emperor. Yes. <laughs> Combo. Talk us through yes. that. Yes. Well, um, a good friend of mine, um, a chap called uh, Mark, Martin Oldham, he he said, "Have you ever thought about trying two two thick heads?" You know, and I said, "No, I've, beforehand, I've never never really." I've always thought, well, I'll go for a thin, thin bottom head and you know a thicker top head. And I've thought, especially with sort of six and a half inch deep toms, you'd, you'd think that that maybe would choke, choke the sound of them, you know. But we put them on and tried it, and straight away it was like, wow, they sound awesome. They're so punchy. They still ring out just just how you want them to ring out, or just how the way I I want them to sound on them for the music that I'm playing. Um, but yeah, they're just really, really controlled. It's, yeah, it sounds wicked. So. not the only quirky thing because you've got two bottom hi-hats yes <laughs> as a pair that aren't a pair yep yeah so we've got a k um hybrid 13 inch bottom hat as the bottom as hat. the bottom and we have a 13 inch k special dry as the which is a bottom hat as the top hat as a top. so yeah so no rules just go with it no i mean it was this is all stuff that's sort of developed over the course of doing shows and and listening back to broadcast mixes listening back to rehearsal recordings you know i think that's really important that you need to in order to constantly evaluate your playing and, and what you're doing and, and just look at constant ways of improving it so this is all stuff that's developed over the the three years that i've been been working in in this in this world so to speak so and it's always just listening at the end of the day it's all about trying to capture things at source so if you can if you can make them sound that way without the engineer having to do big scoops of eq and things like that then the theory of it is that you end up with you know less work for them to do but also a kit that's much closer to where you need it to be or exactly where you need it to be um and the, the theory behind that is you put mics on it and it all should sound good if you play it properly and in time which uh you know which hope, we did today sometime. well i don't know about that but <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so so yeah and the yeah. rest of the symbols as well you've got very sort of distinct dry lot of efx's they're very quick reacting symbols as well aren't they yes yeah and that's another thing that i think transfers really well of electronics you know it's it's trying to get i've come from originally a, a sort of rock drumming background you know i was in loads of sort of punk bands metal bands things like that um and I've come from from that world, but when you take some of those symbols that I used to love to play, you know, like I had a um, 20, 21 inch sweet ride as a as a crash symbol, <laughs> like, you know, it's wicked. But you find quite quickly that sometimes that stuff can take over take over the mix, and you need stuff that that responds very quickly, that is really punchy, but you know, sits in the mix well. And we've we've just found that those EFX symbols work really well with within that sort of um, boundary, so to speak. Yeah, and it's also you can stack them and do other things. They're quite a universal. Yeah, symbol, exactly. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's... yeah, and that's great fun. The experimenting and you know coming up with different stacks and different bits and you know within the realms of what 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 I'm allowed to sort of do. You know, <laughs> I mean the gig is it is a it is a pretty disciplined gig. You know, the the whole this whole approach has been so that the drummer is playing all those parts live you know all, all of this all the electronic parts sometimes you might hear on a gig some of that some of those parts are on track you know on this gig we've we've taken them all off and i've added stuff around the kit so on the on the full rig that i take on tour i've got some bt1 pads where i play the the programming hi-hat pa patches uh, patterns sorry on those and just a few more bits to allow me to play all the sounds of the record on each song sort of thing as much as as much as, as possible so and that's very common in someone's got an spdsx with a couple of little triggers do you know what I mean it's become the norm in pop sense hasn't yes it, for drummers yeah I th yeah definitely and i think that's to do with just the way stuff is produced now you know lots of people are producing stuff with samples and then people when they go to gigs they want to hear that stuff sound like that live you know and there's lots of different ways of doing it um and I think the good, the good thing is is that there's lots of really cool products out there now that that can really help with this, um, and lots of lots of kits that work really well with it together. So 
the, the choice is yours, so to speak. But you know, there's there's lots of different avenues you can go to sort of come up with your own own way of doing it, sort of thing. And, and not not the way I'm doing it, it's not going to suit everyone, sort of thing. But it's good, it's great that you can be creative with it and do your own thing. You know, so it gives you more colours, doesn't it? More it, exactly. textures. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely. So I, I'm kind of treating it as you know, the electronic kit is an extension of the drum kit. So you obviously have to play it in a different way. Um, so it's it's just it's kind of like a, a new discipline to learn, so to speak. So I and think. <laughs> so, <laughs> for you though, obviously, um, the MD of of the band yes is also a drummer and renowned for electronics. So was it for you to sort of went oh wow look look how he does it? Yeah. So how, my how, how um, did you get from there to there? Do you know what I mean? He's yes. So my background, I mean, in terms of. What I've always liked playing, sort of, I've, like I said, fundamentally a rock drummer, but I've been really, really into stuff like The Prodigy, um, Chase and State. It's all this sort of, you know, heavy electronic music. Because to me, the sort of line between that and your, your heavy metal and stuff, it's it's it's, a, it's in a similar realm, in, but with a different sort of production edge to it. So I found that the sort of playing I was doing translated quite well in into that stuff, particularly sort of drum and bass and things like that. Um, and going through college and just meeting people, I ended up meeting a, a drummer called Andy Gangadine. Um, and I, I got to play, play on his kit in his studio once and I was just like completely blown away by, by it all. You was know. that the full circle? Yeah, 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 it was there. That's yeah. a rig. So I was, I was working with a, with a project um, and the, um, yeah, we basically we ended up doing a rehearsal at Andy's studio. And he he he, let, he actually let me have a, have a go on his kit, so I was just sat in this spaceship going, <laughs> I can't believe this is actually happening. So just, you know, yeah, um, it's it's and, a um, strange place to sit. It's all encompassing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, so and from then onwards, really, I've I've established a relationship and sort of been working, you know, on and he's he's encouraged me to. He's been a massive influence on my playing and sort of encouraged me to sort of you know take 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 it your own way sort of thing so so yeah that's kind of my background in a, in a nutshell I think I've probably gone off on a big tangent here but you know <laughs> hopefully you guys can top it out and stuff, so, you know get rid um, of it all <laughs> it, the sort of seamless electronic to acoustic it, have you got to a point where you couldn't do one without the other now is it because some people are so anti-electronics and I feel like it's yeah it's, it's a hurdle that most people just need to get over now yeah I, I mean yeah definitely I mean Obviously, it all comes down to the to the music that you're playing and the gigs that you're doing, and and it's about fitting your playing within that discipline of that music. So, uh, for instance, if I was playing with a a rock artist or something, and and they maybe have a couple of sounds like a hand clap or something like that, I'm probably going to just rock up with you know my SPDSX or something like that. If it's more involved, then I'll build the setup around around that. Um, you know, just to create those. To, to give me myself as a drummer those tools that means that I can take control of playing all of, all of the parts you know rather than rather than you know computers and other things which we know a lot of this stuff has been produced by yeah but when it comes to it being played live the, the drummer I, I view electronics as a as a way of drummers being able to ex extend what they do on gigs so yeah give more exactly do more do more, more things more things to hit <laughs> come on <laughs> So, I hope you enjoyed that. This is just a little insight to how Ollie does his day job, which is yeah. hitting things. Yeah, no, I love it. I'm really super, super lucky to be involved in it all. And, you know, working with the guys from the tower has been absolutely amazing. And, and being able to sort of, you know, the, the vision of what I wanted the, the drums to sound like sort of came to reality with, with this kit and, you know, everything else we spoke about. So, yeah, it's been really cool. Cool. Yeah. So, I hope yeah. you like that. Like, subscribe, we'll stick Ollie's links in, which I'm sure you've got all the socials. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs>